Good evening, ladies and gents, and welcome to another Q8 pilot stream. It is 2100 hours local time, 1800 Zulu. Today, we are going to be flying somewhere brand new. We're flying today from Vietnam to Thailand, and uh, specifically uh, from, uh, let's bring up uh, our friendly uh, Navigraph charts. We're flying from Ton Son Not International. <laughs> Uh, in Vietnam and we're heading to Bangkok International in Thailand. Uh, we're going to take a look at the briefing in a second. Uh, I, both sceneries are payware sceneries. Unfortunately, I was not able to update the commands uh, over at uh, Nightbot, so you will not be getting those, but all the links to the scenery are available in the stream description. That out of the way, want to welcome all of you guys here in chat with me this evening. Rand Cooley, uh, we have Marius, uh, Chris, Badger, Drishal, uh, we have uh, Literal literal Games, welcome aboard, Lionheart, and we have also James and Stan, welcome guys, glad to have you here. Steph, welcome aboard, Thomas13, Captain Leo, welcome guys, glad to have you here. Bradley Evans, welcome aboard, my friend. We have also TFK's Linux Gaming. Welcome aboard. Greg Hill, welcome. Benjamin uh, and Raul Rodriguez. Welcome, guys. Glad to have you here during this live stream. And today we're going to be flying, of course, the best fly-by-wire implementation of an Airbus in any flight sim, in my view, the Tolus A340. The huge humongous aircraft with the beautiful four engines here uh we have it in the thai uh, air livery uh, registration number hotel sierra tango november foxtrot and we're gonna uh, be cruising at thirty-eight thousand feet today and our flight is going to be approximately one hour uh just a little less than one hour in terms of airtime so, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Sam and see maybe we can use Sam today. Let's uh, bring up everything from SimBrief, and we're going to say start pre-flight, stairs, and let's say load. There we go. We can put this away, and we can start looking at the ground services and the fuel trucks coming to the aircraft similar to GSX, uh, but with less accuracy and lots of strange things. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it's pretty decent. I'm not sure why it closes the, uh, you know, the cargo doors immediately. Maybe there is no cargo, but you can see uh, that we're loading the baggage uh, there into the back of the aircraft. Uh, it, it, you know, overall, I think it looks okay. Uh, it's very nice that it's got two fuel trucks. One comes on the left and one comes on the right side of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. Some really nice animations uh, from uh, Sam ground handling, uh, as you can see here, uh, makes it a little bit more believable. <laughs> and uh, of course, we're using today uh, Volanta for the flight tracking. Uh, Volanta is a Q8 pilot channel partner and uh, yeah, the strip that you see uh, with the information is uh, courtesy of uh, Volanta. Hello, Gold. Welcome aboard. Pip, welcome aboard. Glad to have you here. An Asian boy, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you here with us this uh, evening. Okay, so let's hop into the cockpit. And uh, the first thing you'll notice is Tolus in the latest update has made considerable changes to the textures. And you can see things are looking very, very nice, both on the overhead panel as well as the rest of the cockpit. Uh, it's looking really, really good. Uh, I do really like it a lot. All right, let's go ahead and begin with the uh, pre-flight uh, preparation. So the first thing, we're going to make sure the speed brake flaps are both retracted. The landing gear is in the down position and the engine mode selector is in the normal position and all the engine switches are in the off position. Moving to the overhead panel, we're gonna take a look here, make sure we have more than 25 volts of battery, and then we're gonna turn on battery one, battery two, APU battery, and we're gonna bring up the external power, Bravo and Alpha. 
Uh, next, we're going to do crew supply for the oxygen. Ground control can go on. Moving up here, let's test the APU before we fire it up. So fire test is okay. We're going to set the ideas 1, 2, and 3 to nav mode. Next, we're going to go to the lights. Uh, zooming in here, we're going to set the strobe lights to auto. And the nav lights can go to the on position. Emergency lights are armed. Non-smoking is auto, and the fasten seatbelt signs are on. Moving up, we're going to turn on all the uh, fuel tanks here. So main two, main two standby, transfer, center tank, and main three on this side. Perfect. We're going to move up here, and we're going to do the engine fire test real quick. And it checks. Okay, perfect. Moving down here, everything here is looking good. Everything here is looking good. And everything here on the engineer panel is looking good. Excellent. All right. We are now ready to start the APU. But first, let's uh, bring up some lights here to our instruments so we can see a little better. There we go. Much better. There we go. And right there. Did we do the ECAM? Yeah, we did. All right, perfect. Dougal McTavish, good evening, my friend. Glad to have you here. Hey, Mech Getty Pilot, welcome aboard. See my chat in Discord. I do have the uh, I do have the Discord on. Uh, try reloading the stream. Huh? Uh, must be night, but uh, being annoying. Oh, did I? Tried reloading the stream. I put another test chat. Oh, did I really do that? Um, all right, let me check this real quick. All right, guys, give me a second here. Um, I'm going to go on a separate uh, page here. Let's see. I might have uh, clicked on something by mistake. Let's see. Um, all right. Let's go here. All right. Just one second. Let me just start the APU real quick. So we're going to turn on the APU. Um, all right. Let's see. Um. I don't think so, guys. Uh. Oh. All right, Dershal, can you uh, can you try it again now? Uh, just reload, uh, reload again, and see if that fixed the issue. All right, so, all right, I can see you, Dershal. All All right, there we go. <laughs> All right, you're 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 good. <laughs> All right, I I just added him as a mod uh, as well, Dougal. Just if you refresh uh, Dershal, you should be good. Okay, so we're gonna start the APU. The APU door is open. We got that fixed. There we go. <laughs> All right. Okay, and we'll just wait. Okay, let's. Go ahead and start programming the MCDU or the MUCDU. We're going to bring up some lights here. And let's go to... Uh, so the first thing is diff strip. Again, is the sequence that we're going to follow. So D, that's D. And... Uh, guys, just one second.
All right, sorry guys, I received a phone call I had to take, so uh, apologies for that. Uh, okay, so we are at D, so the next one is uh, init A. So from init A, we are going to request our flight plan. There we go. All right, no echo. Now there is an echo, two windows open. Um, all right, so we've got, uh, are you guys okay? Is the audio okay? Hello, Javit, welcome aboard. It stopped, okay, perfect. All right, so we've got everything here, and the nice thing about the integration with SimBrief is that it loads everything, but we're gonna follow the sequence. So this is init A, and next we're gonna go to F, so the flight plan. And from the flight plan, we are going to bring up Navigrav charts. And we are going to click on the briefing here. We are departing uh, Vietnam today, runway 07 right, through the SAP2 Bravo. So let's find that. SAP2 Bravo, that's the one there, or the SAP2 Bravo. So we insert that, there are no transitions for the departure, and insert, perfect. And then we're gonna select uh, Bangkok arrival, and the Bangkok arrival is going to be the ILS runway 19er left, so we're gonna select 19er Lima Zulu, uh, this one here, and it's going to be through the Dawn 3 Charlie, Dawn 3 Charlie, oops. Uh, Dawn, that's the Dawn 3 Charlie arrival. And uh, if we look at our charts real quick here and select the approach and one niner, uh, one niner left, uh, and we check here, we'll see that the Lemos transition is the one we're gonna take. So I'm gonna select Lemos transition. Uh, no transition here, so insert. And now we have the flight plan. Uh, if we come here and set this to flight plan, we'll be able to cycle through and make sure if there are any discontinuities. So this is the departure, and then the top of this climb, top of descent, and this is our arrival here. And it looks like there is a discontinuity, a manual meaning uh, this is, uh, it indicates that uh, it will be vectored in by ATC. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll simply Go to clear, clear manual, and we're gonna clear the discontinuity, and insert, and now we have the full flight plan there. Excellent. All right, so now we are done with F. So diff uh, S is the secondary flight plan. We'll copy the active plan, we'll leave it there, and then we're gonna go to uh, uh, radio. Radio, there's nothing we need to put in radio. We're gonna go to the progress page, and we're just gonna add uh, a couple of things here. We're just gonna add the runway, arrival runway back at uh, our, we have Marco. Welcome to Private Pilot, my friend. Thank you very much, I appreciate your support. Thank you very much for uh, joining as a captain. Okay. So we're gonna come here and uh, we are going to select runway 07 right at uh, VBTS, VBTS. Uh, I did change the alerts today. I'm not sure why they're not coming. Uh, I'm using the stream elements uh, alerts, so I'm not sure why they're not coming. Uh, we'll take a look at that uh, maybe after the stream. Okay. So we're gonna select uh, runway 1707 le left uh, in case we need to come back to the airport. So we'll update that here, excellent. So that's diffs uh, and then um, R, R then init Bravo. Uh, now because we are using SimBrief, it already has all the information here for us and it looks like the alignment is now complete as well. All right, perfect, that's our departure. And then uh, we're gonna go diffs, uh, uh, so in it, uh, then performance. All right, so the performance, again, we can simply select uh, the data request. 
we're going to come up here and turn on the APU bleed and turn off the external power. All right, perfect. Takeoff data received. Flex takeoff. Insert the link. We have flaps 1 and 3.1 for the trim. And here are our V1, V-rotate, and V2 speeds. Brilliant. Trishal, member for 17 months as a senior captain. Thank you very much for your um, support there, Trishal. Appreciate it. I thought I was uh, fired there for a second. <laughs> uh, that's funny. <clears throat> okay. All right. So we are through here with the uh, with the McDo. I'm not sure why the alerts aren't coming. Okay. So in here, we'll put this on the perf page. And so we'll leave that there. Excellent. Let's take a quick look here at uh, all the ground services. You can see that the stairs are still there and we're still loading. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to... Ground service is finished. All right. It says ground services are finished. Excellent. So we're going to say start flight. And that will automatically uh, start removing everything. <clears throat> okay. So we have everything here looking good. Let's come to the... Let's come to the intercom, and it looks like it has removed the chocks, and we're gonna remove the external power as well. Excellent. And let's go ahead and turn on our beacon light. And with the beacon, it should dismiss any remaining uh, ground uh, vehicles there by the aircraft. Okay, last checks here. Uh, we're gonna check the oxygen. Perfect, oxygen is checked. And everything else, we are ready to start our engines. Okay, let's come to better pushback and start push. Out of cockpit, please show me where you want to go. All right, we're gonna just set the aircraft here for a short pushback out of our position. We can see the vehicle is already um, Ground to cockpit. leaving Toe the area. The Giggle Yachts. Eagle Yachties. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you here. Hello, Alex. Taxi out of position. We can taxi out of the position, but we'll just push back. We can just taxi out that way and go that. You're all right. Okay. Uh, one thing that uh, we don't want to forget is the... Uh, let me remove that from the view. And let's see here. Um, are we there? We are there. Okay. So here we are. Okay. We are going to taxi via Victor to, to Sierra Niner. Or actually, we'll go to Sierra 10. And uh, that will take us straight into uh, 07 right uh, for our departure today. Hello, Fabian. Welcome aboard, my friend. Okay. So, everything here is looking good, and we are ready to start our engines. I'm going to switch the camera to the taxi camera here, right? So we can see what's going on with the pushback truck. And we can also go to pushback truck and say tug view. There we go. Look at those engines, guys. Pretty cool view, huh? You can see the aircraft being lifted. All right, perfect. So connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. All right, let's release the parking brake. Parking brake released. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. 38,000 feet. We need to set the altimeter. Okay, so we can start the engines. Ignition to start. All right, everything looks good. We'll start with engine number four. All righty. Altimeter 1008. Okay, 
Okay, 1008 and 1008. Perfect. Look at how beautiful this aircraft is. Looks gorgeous. All right. Engine number four is coming up. Allison Johnson, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. <coughs> really looking uh, forward to uh, having that discussion with you guys uh, over at FS Expo. And uh, if you guys can, uh, uh, any of the mods, if you can post uh, Allison's uh, link or Twitch uh, channel, I'll be very grateful. All right, we have a good start. Let's go ahead and start engine number one. All right, engine number one is coming up. And we'll start this clock. Perfect. We're going to come here and set the auto brake to reject to takeoff. Operation complete. Set parking brake. All right. And let's set the parking brake. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. All right. So this way we can monitor what's happening uh, there with the tow truck. And the engine number one is coming up. Excellent. We'll put the terrain on this side and the weather on the first off uh, on the captain's side. There we go. Disconnect. <clears throat> Hello, George. Welcome aboard. She's a big, nice lady. Absolutely. All right. Let's start engine number three. I really like this uh, camera here. Very Probably nice. Disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal will be on the left. We'll see you next time. Have a safe flight. Thank you very much for your service. All right, here's the uh, tow truck moving away, and we are lined up to taxi on Vector for on Victor for uh, runway zero seven right. Excellent. Right, let's set the flaps, flaps uh, one. And the trim is, uh, I think it was uh, 3.1, wasn't it? We look here, the trim was 3.1 units, yes. I think once we start all engines, uh, it should come automatically, but we'll just, uh, we'll wait. I think it will set the trim automatically. All right, and finally engine number two. There we go. I'm wondering if, uh, yeah, it does have the rats. I guess all Airbuses are fitted with the Ram Air Turbine. Now the Air uh, Rat uh, or the Ram Air Turbine, for those of you who do not know, is, uh, is a life-saving uh, feature on Airbus aircraft. And uh, basically what it does, it's a little fan that deploys uh, from the aircraft fuselage uh, when there is dual engine failure and complete loss of electrical power and uh, it supplies, uh, it uses the air, uh, obviously, uh, to generate electrical power and power up the hydraulics. It will allow the pilots to uh, have very limited, uh, but uh, they'll be capable of, of moving the flight controls uh, with the RAT. So it is, uh, it is uh, one of the safety features. All right, we have a good start on all four engines, and we are ready to go. Excellent. Engine mode selector goes to norm, and we can turn off the APU bleed, APU master, nose light to taxi, and let's take a look here. Yeah, you can see here that the trim has been automatically set up without, uh, as soon as engine, all the four engines are powered, 
the trim will be set automatically so we don't need to do anything we have the flap set and everything is good to go all right let's uh change this back to captain uh, so the camera is off and we can see the pfd and mfds and we can see all the information here everything's looking good uh tcas uh, will set this on auto and we'll be sure to put this on tara before departure all righty all is good guys we are ready to go parking brake is released and we'll notify cabin crew we're good to go Absolutely gorgeous looking aircraft, the A340. Oof. <laughs> Getting carried away with the views, that's what happens. Thank God we're in the sim. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, let's do the takeoff config. No blues, we are cleared for takeoff. Look at those wings. Gorgeous, just absolutely gorgeous. A plane that's longer than the uh, then the A380, I suppose so, yeah. It's, uh, it's a pretty long aircraft. It's huge. The A340 is huge. And this is why it's no longer, uh, you know, an efficient aircraft with four engines. Hello, Rain Man. All right. We're getting close. So cabin is ready. Let's set TCAS to TARA. And we're gonna start our clock. Right, there we go, clock. Landing lights are on, strobe lights on, runway turnoff lights are on, nose light to take off. Uh, we can put the wings light on, it's not gonna matter too much. But uh, there we go, we are ready for departure. Just absolutely gorgeous looking aircraft. By an account of real world pilots, this aircraft has the fly-by wire implementation is the is as close as it can get to the real thing. So it has a very, very uh, unique characteristics uh, in flight. Very, very cool. All right, let's line up. And uh, ladies and gents, we are cleared for takeoff. Right. Since they are stable. Man flex, SRS and runway. Rotate at 155 knots. V1. V1. Rotate. Lies of rear climb. Gear is going up. Oh, just look at that. X-Plane 12 at its best.
This looks gorgeous, guys, I tell you. All right. All right, thrust climb is set. Autopilot one is engaged. Let's retract the flaps. Disarm the speed brake. We're looking good. Very nice, uh, very nice scenery of Vietnam uh, by Aura Designs. And the nice thing is they've included uh, ortho photos uh, for the uh, for the entire area. Um, uh, about 3.5 gigs of compressed ortho photos. Uh, for Vietnam, which makes this uh, a very, very nice departure. Brilliant. If the cockpit uh, sounds are too loud, guys, just let me know. I can uh, put it down. Z-SIM pilot, welcome. The scenery is very, very nice indeed. Definitely worth uh, worth the price. I was actually surprised to see the Vietnam scenery. I never knew that it existed. So I was pretty happy uh, to, to find it uh, as I was uh, planning this uh, flight for you guys. Sands are fine, all right, perfect. All right, we're climbing through 6,000 for 38,000. And it looks like I saw someone asking for failures. We can definitely do failures uh, today for this flight. Uh, I'll tell you, but the Tolis A340 or the, A the Airbus A340 is a challenging aircraft uh, to land. It's, uh, it's not an easy aircraft to land. So, uh, but yeah, if you guys want to do failures, why not? We'll do failures. <laughs> Hello, Saren. Welcome aboard. Yeah, the takeoff was really cool. Right, we're approaching, uh, there is a restriction here, let me bring it up. So, there is a restriction here at 900,000, another restriction at 10,000. Looks like there's another one there, which we can't see. Let's put this on 40. Yeah, uh, a few restrictions there as we depart. Uh, all right, we are approaching 10,000 feet, so we're going to come here to the init data. We're going to set the cost index to zero to save on fuel. That is now set. And we're going to also go to uh, the progress page and we're going to select our arrival, uh, which is in this case uh, VTBS, uh, VTBS, and we're going to select uh, the arrival runway, which is one niner left. All right, let's update that. And about 400 nautical miles uh, to our destination. And I'll put this on the flight plan. There we go, excellent. And the aircraft will continue to climb once we clear uh, the current restriction. Hello, Liam, welcome aboard. Easy to stale strike, yeah, uh, very much so. So normally uh, with the tallest, depending of course on the weight, it is recommended that you use flaps too for the takeoff. Uh, or yeah, tail strike is, uh, is something that you definitely can very easily some issues there with the orthos, but this looks really, really good. Lovely. Thank you very much, Louis Monza. Thank you, sir, for being here. Uh, Cap, do you use the Mini FCU? It is uh, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I do have the Mini FCU. Uh, I do not use it, though, I have to say. It is uh, sitting in my, uh, in my cupboard collecting dust right now. <laughs> All right, we're approaching 10,000 feet. We're going to go ahead and kill the lights. Landing lights off. Runway turn off lights off. Uh, wing lights off and the nose lights are off so all the lights are off everything here no lights so we're good excellent and we can push this now to 80 nautical miles we'll leave it there excellent 
and we're also going to release the passengers. So seat belts are off. Hello, Renan de Oliveira. How are you, my friend? Thank you uh, for always giving great XP12 streams. Well, thank you for being here and for your support, sir. I appreciate it. I'm really bugged that the uh, you know that the alerts aren't working. Uh, but yeah, I I can see stream la uh, uh, stream elements working, but I'm not sure why the alerts aren't coming. Very very strange. Right, ten thousand feet. We're looking good. I believe the transition altitude is eighteen thousand feet. Again, you can see here the FMA uh, is is doing exactly what you uh, expect it to do. You see the alt. Uh, constraint, uh, so there is a restriction here, and you'll see this immediately on the FMA. And obviously, we're still in climb mode. There is 12,000, that's another restriction, and then after that, we should be able to clear all the way to 38,000 feet. IFR Captain, welcome aboard. Hello, Diego, welcome. I am too, George. I really am looking. Uh, forward to 12.1. So let me, guys, ask you this. Are you more excited about X-Plane 12.1 or Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator 2024? Hello, DT. I'll tell you which one I'm excited for. Cole says he's excited for 12.1 more, so... 12.1. Uh, all right. Wow. <laughs> Almost everyone is uh, is 12.1. Gee. And you know what, guys? You can add me to that, too. <laughs> Liam, uh, MSFS 2024. The Flying Scotsman. Hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Very glad to have you here. I've been watching some of your uh, videos, and uh, yeah. Uh, keep up the good work. All right, here we are now. All right, so now there are no more restrictions, so we're going to climb to our final cruise altitude now. And just look at this beautiful turn here with those nice-looking engines out of uh, Vietnam. Uh, we are now clearing the SID. I think MSFS 2024 is going to be start of uh, restart of MSFS, so you have to go through months of updates and corrections. Um, that might be the case. Yeah, I really cannot. Uh, I, I cannot really forecast. Uh, I hope that whatever they've done in terms of fixing in the uh, current version, uh, that they carry that forward uh, to the new sim. Uh, that's for sure, but yeah, we're gonna see a plethora uh, of content again on how to tweak things and how to set things up and how to make sure your performance doesn't suffer, how to stop the stutters in 2024. I'm sure all of that is coming. Incidentally, there is a new NVIDIA driver that was released today. <clears throat> I still haven't tested it with Xplain. I hope that NVIDIA has fixed the issues with the uh, Vulcan uh, so that we can enjoy uh, the latest NVIDIA driver with X-Plane. Uh, I'm not sure if, Drishal, if you've tested it, uh, but if you have, uh, do please do let me know if it's, uh, if it's working uh, okay now for X-Plane. We shouldn't be getting any ads, guys. Is anyone getting ads during the stream? Not tested it yet, but we'll do it tonight. I'll let you know tomorrow. Toll is better than Phoenix. All right. So, first of all, we cannot compare this aircraft with, uh, with Phoenix. Um... 
All right, perfect. Uh, for for a simple reason that this is an A340 and there is no A340. Phoenix is an A320. So if we were to do a comparison, in fairness sake, we need to compare the uh, Tolis A320 with the uh, A325 Phoenix. Now there is a little bit of a variation, so it's an A320 Neo, but I have done extensive testing, guys, and I will be very honest in what I report here. There are many things that are available in the Phoenix A320 in terms of the system simulation that are not available in the Tolis aircraft, one of which is the proper simulation of uh, actuated, uh, uh, of, sorry, accumulated brake pressure. So if we come here, uh, so normally what would happen is if you turn off the hydraulic, uh, let me see here, where are the hydraulics on this aircraft? Um, blue, red, all right, green. All right, so right here. So if I come here and I turn off the hydraulic on the yellow system, uh, on the Fina, on the A320, uh, and you turn on the electrical pump as well, then and then start using the brakes, hitting the brakes, what you'll find out is that the accumulated pressure will decrease. And the only way that you can repressurize this is, well, you can call the engineers, but also you can uh, turn on the uh, one of the uh, cargo doors. If you operate them, they will uh, repressurize the system momentarily. So you'll have a little bit of more uh, accumulated. So it will build up the pressure uh, in the brakes. And so you can apply them. This simulation particularly is not available on the Tolis A320, but it is available on uh, the Phoenix. There are a few things as well in the McDo uh, I, I went through uh, and I will say they're very close. What I do like more about X-Plane is the actual fly-by wire implementation. Uh, in uh, X-Plane I think it is much much better. Uh, that's my personal opinion and the opinion of real-world certified pilots that the fly-by-wire implementation of the tallest aircraft is the closest you can get to the real thing. <laughs> Hello, sir. I was wondering if you have any idea as to why X-Plane scenery is appearing flat without airport buildings, custom scenery for contact. Um, I think your order uh, in the scenery.ini file is incorrect. Both hydraulic study and here can be complex very fast. Yep, absolutely. So, guys, let me ask you this question. If you were given the choice, uh, now let's suppose that you have both Microsoft Flight Sim and x 12, right? And you like both of the sims equal, so they're, they're equal in your, in your eyes. Which of the following aircraft would you personally buy? The Phoenix A320, the PMDG 737-8 or dash 9, or you prefer something like the Tolis A320 and the IXCG 737. Hello, Glenn. Welcome aboard. Still, by the way, guys, we have the Orthos. Uh, for Vietnam, so since departure until this point, uh, you know, all this area is covered with ortho photos, and this is all included with the uh, Vietnam scenery by Aura Designs. Very, very nice scenery, well worth uh, the asking price. Highly recommended if you like uh, flying in Asia, uh, then this is definitely an airport that I recommend. Tolis and IXEG. I'd buy the Zebo. <laughs> ICT, Fila 742. I love the tallest series. I'm an analog gal, so the ICG is lovely. Yeah. Yeah. PMGG, ICG, and Phoenix. All right. I used to order all three in Thailand. It is pretty good. Oh, really? I'll, I, I need to give this a try. It's just, it, it, it just takes ages to load. Look at this aircraft.
the clouds are starting to look really, really nice in X-Plane, especially with Active Sky. Alright, 29, about 8,000 feet to go. We'll reach top of climb in about uh, 35 nautical miles. All looking good. I have all those planes in golf sims. <laughs> well, Allison, yeah. I mean, as a, as a content creator, I expect to do, that you probably have most of these uh, aircraft, if not all. Now you're confirming that you have all of them. So, uh, yeah. What about the A330 on X-Plane 12? The default A330 is a very good aircraft for being a default Airbus A330 in complete honesty, but it is buggy. It's got, it's got some issues. Uh, I know the guys over at X-Works uh, have done a mod uh, just from the visual perspective. Um, and they have announced that they're working on an A380. Uh, there was a screenshot actually of it so but i'm sure that it's going to be like i hope that it won't be uh you know one of the uh, abandoned projects i finally saw an alert there on the screen so it looks like the alerts are finally working but it looks like there is a, a delay I tried that, ended up not loading at all. Got auto ortho instead, and it works fine. I don't know why I always like X Plane 12 better. I had MSFS since two years, and I use it uh, two to three hours. <laughs> Hello, Antonio. Um, not a creator, and I have both sims and all the top level planes. I do one flight every single day at 5:30 in the morning before I go to work. Wow, Antonio. That's pretty cool, man. I admire that. In the morning, man, I I cannot do, I cannot function without uh, first having a cup of coffee, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and then I, I look over my uh, meeting schedule uh, just to see how crappy the day is gonna be. <laughs> Drishal, by the way, guys, Drishal is uh, has his uh, own channel as well. And he is a <coughs> content creator. Uh, he has some really nice streams. Uh, very, very pleasant demeanor. And uh, he knows his stuff. Uh, he's got some excellent, excellent tutorials. So uh, please do uh, visit his channel. Uh, Drishal, you are at uh, leisure to include the link to your channel in chat. If that's what you want to do, please go ahead. Uh, Peter says, I start long haul around 6.30 a.m. most weekdays as I work from home. Oh, cool. I get my coffee and start my flight every morning. Well, that's very cool. So it looks like all of you guys, uh, I can't function without getting in the cockpit. <laughs> I can imagine. And I can imagine it has to be explained, the Flying Scotsman. <laughs> You're most welcome, Drishal, anytime. All right. We are at top of climb at 38,000 feet. And if I look here, uh, yeah, two nautical miles. Uh, we are maybe 170 nautical miles from top of descent. So, here's again a look at this lovely, lovely aircraft. Let's do a cinematic flyby. There you go. Look at that, uh, the contrails there. This is one thing that um, MSFS, I think, will never get right, so the contrails. And this is something I really like in X-Plane, is the contrails, the engine and wing condensation. Uh, and those require the proper temperatures in order to, uh, to be seen, <clears throat> which is pretty cool. Let me show you guys one thing here. If you go to the back here, look at that. I mean, this would be screenshot material right there. Very, very nice. 
Yeah. Nice looking cockpit. The camera system is beautiful, uh, so quick and easy to use. Yes, indeed. I've been making use of my bigger planes recently, trying to learn more and get used to how they fly. Uh, yeah, they they can get a little bit tricky, uh, the Flying Scotsman. Uh, but, um, but, yeah, I, I get you. I, I like GA aircraft uh, more so than big airplanes, uh, especially... Uh, the V Fly to Air General Aviation Aircraft for X Plane 12. They are just phenomenal. Very, very good. I'd like to see Airbus devs put display unit reflections on the underside of the glare shields. That would be nice. Yeah. Okay. So if we look here, we are 185 nautical miles from top of descent, so not very long to go. If we look here at uh, Volanta, we can take a look here at our flight so far, and we can actually tilt the map, and just look how beautiful this is. This is our flight. We are now in cruise, and not too long before we arrive into our destination. Uh, again, if, guys, uh, Volanta is uh, is a free electronic flight bag and flight tracker. Uh, if you don't have it, I highly recommend it. There are a few things, a few features that are paid features, uh, such as schedules, but for the most part, everything is included free of charge. I highly recommend that you get uh, Volanta uh, or Simtulkit Pro, whichever one you prefer. Uh, Volanta seems to have a... Uh, a, a more refined user interface. So the user interface uh, is a bit more user friendly than SimpleKit Pro. <clears throat> but SimpleKit Pro has all the features that Volanta has and is free. So, uh, so yeah, it's either or. Uh, but the looks, the the user interface of Volanta is much better. The sounds of the engines outside is bad. Yeah, they're not good. I agree. Bangkok, been there in real life. Very nice, massive airport. And uh, Thai Models has uh, really developed the, air, uh, the airport to a high degree of fidelity, which uh, we'll be taking a look at once we arrive. I switched to Volanta a few days ago and loving it so far. Uh, it seems like it's brilliant, but Volanta was much lighter on my system. It is lighter. Volanta is less demanding in terms of system resources for some reason. And even when I run it uh, with uh, Streamlabs uh, OBS, when I stream, I have found that uh, SimToolkit Pro uh, kind of degrades performance a little bit. Uh, but with Volanta, there is no there's no effect on FPS whatsoever. Can't go wrong with time models. Brilliant sceneries, absolutely. Can't wait to see when you coming into land. Well, that is going to be in probably half an hour from now, uh, so not too long. Uh, we are at 168. Let's come here and go to the flight plan. We're going to select Kakad. And from Kakad, all right, so Kakad to the north. Let's go to Vinas. All right, let's go to the fix information. And we're going to bring up uh, our friendly Navigraph charts. Uh, let's see here. Where are we? There we are. All right, that's where we're flying right now. And let's bring up the McDo. We are going to key in the arrival uh, airport, which is uh, Victor uh, Tango Bravo Sierra. And runway one niner left. We enter that here. Then we're gonna go to the charts, one niner left. There we go. And let's select the radial. The radial is uh, 195, uh, 10 nautical miles. We'll enter that in the radius, brilliant. And then, now we have that. Uh, so all is good here, perfect. And next thing is we're gonna go to perf and we're gonna add uh, the arrival information. So we're going to go to Q&H. We're going to select the weather. 
And the QNH is 1007, 1007. The current temperature over at Bangkok is 30 Celsius. Ooh, quite warm. All right, so 30, the winds are 190 degrees, 11 knots. 190 degrees, 11 knots, okay. All right, 190, 11. And finally, we're gonna come down here, uh, straight in landing, uh, DA is, uh, that's cat one, cat two, so the DA, or the decision height, is 101. 101. There we go. And all the information is set. And we are good. Let's put this back on flight plan. Bring it down here. Perfect. Benny, Benny, welcome aboard. Yeah, setting camera views is definitely very easy in uh, X-Plane. Hello, Blast One. The default camera for X-Plane 12 is not bad, but I just feel that it's super clunky. I don't feel that at all. Are you uh, using the Thrustmaster throttles? Yes, sir. I am using the Thrustmaster, uh, Thrustmaster throttles. So far, so good. The best uh, flight sim purchase I've ever made was Navigraph. Don't know uh, how I flew without it. Yeah, Navigraph is great. It's very, very good. Now, this is, when we're flying over at 38,000 feet, uh, what you see here is default explained scenery. And in all fairness and all honesty, at this altitude, I mean, it doesn't really matter if it's photoreal or not, does it? I mean, it looks phenomenal. Just look at how long this aircraft is. Jeez. Here is another cinematic flyby. So let me ask you guys, I've done a review of the AirSim 3D, um, AirSim 3D Citation, and there were a few comments that uh, were, you know, very, not very pleasant, so I had to remove those, unfortunately, uh, but I think what I've originally said <clears throat> about the developer and, uh, and the aircraft was echoed by many of you, uh, both in the comment section and also via email. It looks like the, the developer uh, has left a very bitter taste uh, in the mouths of many in the community. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but, uh, and they were, at, so a, a few folks were asking, why did you even review the, uh, review the aircraft? And I think I've mentioned, stated the reasons why I reviewed it on the channel. Um, and there is a very good reason why I reviewed the aircraft uh, on the channel. At least my conscience is clear uh, now that uh, I've done it. Uh, a full review, an unbiased review, full review, full flight. And uh, if there was actually a couple of people who um, said that they were actually on the fence uh, on buying the aircraft and after watching the uh, the stream, they said, no, there's not a, not a chance that we're paying $60 for this aircraft. And and this is what, you know, the channel is all about, is to help you guys make informed decisions uh, about add-ons and whether to buy them or not, or to make an investment or not. And uh, in, in, obviously $60 is, is not little money uh, and uh, for, for a lot of you. And so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I've done it. The default x plane camera system is amazing. I loved getting the user. Absolutely. Love a good flyby. Always the Flying Scotsman. Always. Yeah, the, those alerts from, uh, from the stream elements doesn't seem to be working very well. Uh, but yeah, I'll figure, I'll try to figure out and see why it's not working. 
let me ask you guys this. Do you guys like those alerts uh, when they come on the screen and say this is so subscribe, this is so gifted, uh, or do you normally just like to see it in chat? For me, and quite honestly, um, when I watch, uh, you know, there are very few content creators that I watch, but when I do watch them, I feel that, uh, you know, those alerts are a bit distracting uh, for me. So, Allison says yes, she does like those alerts. Okay. Are you using Soundpack? Yes, I am using the uh, Soundpack, which is the BSS Soundpack. Not a very good one, to be honest. So, I don't recommend that you uh, buy the Soundpack. There is a free Soundpack for the Tolis, and I recommend that you get the free over the BSS Soundpack. Please don't invest your money in this Soundpack. It's not very good. The free one is much better. I like to see just chat. I also prefer not to see the bar at the top of the screen. Yeah, likewise, Chris. Uh, a, a lot of you, though, have been asking me to put it so that they know when we're arriving and, uh, you know, get information on the altitude and things like that. So, there you go. TFK Linux Gaming. TFK's Linux Gaming Super Chat at $23.80. 22 euros from TFK's Linux Gaming. I like the alerts. <laughs> Finally, there comes the alert uh, from TFK Linux Gaming. I'm not sure if it's going to come on this screen, but thank you very, very much for the uh, 22 euros. Uh, very, very nice of you, TFK Linux Gaming. I appreciate that. Uh, and he does like the alerts. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We have uh, finally, see, see, I hear everything before it comes on screen. Uh, so I think it comes on the screen now. So the alerts appear to be working okay. Yeah, it was on the screen, yeah. Uh, depends, yes. It could be distracting, especially if you're on final or uh, past some scenery. Me, personally, I like a blank screen with the sim only and the beautiful uh, sounds, yeah. But likewise, it works, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's a lot for you to just try if, <laughs> you know, if the alerts were working or not. But I really, really appreciate that. It's very generous of you, sir. Uh, speaking of channel members, uh, by the way, for all of you who are members here in chat, I know that I haven't done much for members. But that is about to change because we are going to be doing uh, group flights. And those will be members only group flights. Those will be announced in advance, probably a week in advance, and I will also try to use only freeware scenery during those uh, group flights, so you guys can enjoy uh, with me uh, those uh, those fine group flights. We've done only one, I think it was really cool, it was a lot of fun, but I haven't just gotten around to it, but that is coming very soon. Um, what do you use to update your ARAC? Navigraph, absolutely. Also, it also for the content. Well, thank you very much, uh, TFK Linux Gaming. Again, that's very generous of you, sir. All right, let's take a quick look here at our instruments uh, here. All right, so TD in about 89 nautical miles, so we're almost at our destination. You can see the beautiful clouds there forming. Uh, the winds should be calm, uh, or the skies should be clear at our destination. Let's take a look here. A uh, few clouds at 1,500 feet. And yeah, there's that's it. So I think we should be fine. BFR conditions. And if we look here at the telemetry information, uh, about 200 nautical miles altogether before we arrive into our destination. So we're looking good there. Perfect. Yes, I use the FMS Data Manager to update Xplane, and I use Navigraph Hub to update uh, everything to do with Microsoft Flight Sim. Love uh, your channel, Q8. Uh, the picture quality and flights are always of the highest quality. Not sure about the landings, though. <laughs> yeah, the landings, uh, I, I've gotten better, I think, over the years. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you learn every 
you learn every day. Yeah, definitely, Goal. Uh, we are going to be scheduling those group flights. Uh, now, for the group flights, we're more than likely going to fly GA aircraft. Uh, we'll set up the VFR flight plan beforehand. Uh, there's going to be multiple takeoffs and landings, uh, maybe some touch and goes. Uh, we'll visit some points of interest uh, along the way. Uh, and maybe we'll also use. Uh, uh, of course, Discord is going to be there for chat. Uh, I was thinking for those of you who have say intentions, ATC, we can actually uh, do like a multiplayer there. So uh, we'll be able to hear one another, so that'll be cool. But yeah, I think Discord chat will be, will be sufficient. S still trying to figure out how to update. I got Navigraph and the Events Manager just won't update. Just kidding. Yeah, every landing is different and it's challenging for sure. Yeah, for sure. And uh, that's okay. Uh, I mean, I know I messed up on uh, many, so there is no shame in that. Yeah. I know I've messed up uh, a lot of my landings. Uh, man, you should have seen me, Flying Scotsman. You should have seen me when I first started. Uh, you know, uh, for me, departing from making tutorials and guides and things like that to making flights, uh, man, I, I don't know how many times I've crashed and or uh, like couldn't land properly or landed uh, and, and overshot the runway, especially with uh, the Felis uh, 747. But uh, yeah, practice makes perfect. And uh, not not that I'm claiming not perfect, but yeah, I've, I've gotten better over the years, I think. I love to hand fly, by the way. I, I prefer to hand fly. I think it's, uh, it's a lot more fun to hand fly than than to uh, use the autopilot. And for this reason, I like general aviation aircrafts uh, a lot more than uh, airlines. Any 757 stream inside a cargo ops? Sure, Benny, uh, if that's what you guys like. Uh, how many of you guys would like to see a cargo flight on the 757? I'll run a poll, Benny Benny. Uh, but you know what, Benny Benny? We'll, we'll schedule one just for you. <laughs> we'll schedule one just for you. Uh, I, I like your channel and subscribe. Uh, more voice content would be cool. Yeah, 757 cargo. All right, you got it, guys. Um, uh, mods, can you please uh, put in a link to the Flying Scotsman uh, channel as well in chat uh, so people can go visit him. Uh, again, a uh, an emerging uh, content creator uh, uh, focused primarily on X-Plane. Uh, I, I didn't know about you, the Flying Scotsman, until I saw a couple of posts from uh, Laminar uh, uh, on, on some of your videos or I think a stream. So I went and looked over your channel, and uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Thank you, uh, Drish. Appreciate it. Now, I'll tell you guys, speaking of hand flying, this specific aircraft, the Tolis A340, is actually a very challenging aircraft to hand fly. Uh, though it's got fly-by-wire, but it's just a huge, huge aircraft, and you feel the heaviness um, as you uh, disconnect the autopilot and start uh, uh, hand-flying the aircraft, especially when the weather conditions aren't that good. Um, all right, so you got it, guys. 7757 Cargo will be next. Uh, Flying Frank Fan, I flew in uh, versions A340s years ago, but there was nothing so special about them as a passenger that I can recall, in complete contrast to the 747s. Well, the 747s, obviously, it's got the double deck. It's just like the, you know, when you fly on the, uh, on the A380, uh, you know, when you're on that upper deck, it, it's a just completely brand new experience, as if you've never flown before. And it's very sad to see that the A380 uh, is is no more, uh, and uh, whatever is is in service will remain in service until it reaches end of life, and then those will be retired, and we will 
there will be a point in the near future where where we will not be able to see an A380 again, uh, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, yeah, see, the, the, one of the nice things about Laminar, and they started doing this recently, and I, I really like the fact that they started promoting the smaller content creators, uh, which, is, which is nice. And... Uh, they overall, I think Laminar has come a long way in terms of the marketing uh, and engagement with the community. Um, for example, you'll see them uh, putting screenshots from their Discord where people just go and they say, oh, you know, this is uh, coming from this guy and this is coming from that guy. And uh, we can see the smaller content creators being mentioned uh, by Laminar, giving them exposure. So I do really appreciate what they're doing and every chance I get uh, as well while I'm streaming uh, I try to promote uh, those uh, you know young creators uh, which I believe are the future of uh, our hobby uh, there will be a point uh, obviously where Q8 uh, you know blue games and XP72 will eventually quit making videos and making streams uh, nothing lasts guys uh, so at some point, uh, you know, we will, we will sort of very slowly disappear from, from the scene and there will be new creators that come and take over. Just like if you look at 2015 when I started and was inspired by our late friend, uh, Matt Davis, uh, may God has, uh, mercy on his soul, um, you know, there was uh, Castrator. Uh, I know that Squirrel used to do a lot more flight simming at the time. There was Matt. Uh, there was Thomas Rasmussen. Um, and there were just, uh, you know, very good content creators uh, at the time. Uh, and those have gone away. Uh, you know, the big content creators uh, of that era uh, are no longer uh, there. A frugal sim, for example. And so we came along as in Q8 and Thomas at the time. Thomas then dropped. Uh, I was there for a while. I quit for a while, came back. Uh, but at, at some point, I think, uh, uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Rand. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Jeff Fabiano used to do a lot of XP stuff. No more, yeah. Uh, so definitely uh, there will be a time where others will take over i see a plethora of flight sim content uh i don't watch all of it in fact there are a lot of very good ones but uh, there are a handful of content creators that i watch today uh, i watch uh, a320 sim pilot fly deck to sim v1 simulations i watch into the blue simulations i watch uh flight sim hangar which is uh, mark my good friend and captain canada uh, those are the, you know, the content creators that I faithfully watch. Of course, not to forget uh, Blue Games and XP72. Uh, I watch those uh, as well. I, li I really like their podcast. I really like to listen to their points of view and things. Uh, less than 100 subs left. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> That's cool. I'm so glad I started making vids. Nothing like the feeling of doing a vid and uploading it on YouTube. What a buzz. Yeah. Uh, the more, um, uh, you know, you'll, you'll get a lot more. Uh, the, the most rewarding thing, guys, in this hobby thus far for me was the inspiration I gave to people who have, who have become real-world pilots. Uh, there were at least five or six folks that actually wrote to me and told me, Q8, because of you, we have uh, pursued a career in aviation and we are now type rated on, you know, either the Boeing or the A320 or some sort of an aircraft, which to me was the ultimate joy uh, to have received those, uh, you know, those emails. Uh, there was a story of a, of a young girl a uh, very long time ago. Uh, when I first started, I think, with flight simming, uh, the channel was fairly popular. I think I was at about 20,000 subscribers or so. All right, so we're almost there at top of descent. Let's reset the MCP altitude 
to 2,000 feet, and we're going to begin a uh, nav descent uh, towards uh, Bangkok. So I think we are good here. Destination one. All right, here we go. And nav descent has now begun. There we go. So this lady, um, she was actually a young girl. Uh, she was, I think, maybe 16 or 17 at the time. And uh, she sent me a, an email out of the blue and she said, uh, Hi, QA pilot. I watch your channel and I really like your content, but I need your help with something. I need Active Sky uh, for P3D. Please, please, please help me. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I mean, when somebody, it, it just sometimes, you know, I just, can, there are certain people, the way they approach you, you just cannot say no to them. And uh, I know I've done this so many times in the past where people just say, can you please give me this? And the way they say it, the innocence in their, in their approach is, is something I just cannot say no to. So I said, okay, I am going to purchase the serial number for you and I'll give it to you. And I went and purchased the serial number. I gave it to her and she replied back. I said, oh my God, the serial actually worked. And I have Active Sky. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And that was it. And then not too long ago, I think it was maybe a year and a half ago, right before Flight Sim Expo 2023, I received an email that was actually in my junk folder. And when I started looking at the email, it was actually coming from that young girl, which wasn't young anymore. Well, I mean, she's still younger than me. <laughs> But she wrote me a very long email telling me that if you recall Q8, I've asked you many years ago for a serial for Active Sky. And, uh, and you gave it to me and you were just very cordial and very nice that you gave it to me. And I want you to know that because of you, I was inspired to become a pilot and I am now a Dash AQ400 pilot. Uh, and and of course she told me which airline she's working for and she told me to come and go and visit her if I'm ever in the States. Uh, now that never materialized, but, uh, but I, I, I actually had tears in my eyes after reading her email. It was a very emotional email. She was very emotional in what she wrote. And uh, she's actually making a living based on an inspiration that she got from the channel. And because I've helped her get Active Sky, you know, that, was, that was the thing for her. So I'm very grateful for all these experiences. Uh, Flying Frank Q8 uh, just have reminded me of quite a lot of the older content creators. A pity some of them went away. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel exactly the same way. Why is it the best fly-by-wire Airbus? Uh, because it's just the fly-by-wire implementation is done uh, as close as possible to the real aircraft. So the fly-by-wire uh, at by account of real world pilots, it is as close as it can get to the real thing. Felt that way on a Turkish 787. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Very nice of her. Absolutely. All right. We are at 29,000 feet, uh, folks. And if we look here, we're looking good. So we are going to turn on the landing system here and in preparation for our arrival. And uh, everything else is looking good. Let's switch to the outside view real quick. Now, again, here... I want to just draw your attention to the ground textures. Now, this is not ortho, okay? So this is all default X-Plane. And in all honesty, from this altitude, it doesn't look bad at all. I mean, look at this. This doesn't look bad at all, guys, does it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not real world photo real scenery, but it's very representative of what you'd see. And quite frankly, at this altitude, you know, it's not really going to make that big of a difference. But that actually looks pretty good, I have to say.
one day I haven't flown on a 777 jet. Really? Hopefully one day. Man, I, I'm, I'm surprised. Yeah. You can't spot the details from this uh, altitude. No, you can't. But you can, you know, you can see that it's very pleasant. Uh, I mean, it's not like it's, it's fine. It's perfectly fine. How many of you guys, you know, uh, how many of you think that the scenery is the most important thing? That if you, if the scenery isn't for real, then, you know, it's a no-go for you. Only thing is, it does not look like Thai scenery. Yeah, it doesn't. I, I agree. For me, the flight model is more important. Um, same here. The weather and the night lighting for me. Yeah, and I have to say that the night lighting in X-Plane is, is gorgeous. It's all about the aircraft. A2A simulations taught me that. Absolutely. Absolutely. System depth and flight model is the most important, mainly for training purposes. Yeah, I know, Drishal, you're preparing for your PPL, so... Clouds and weather. You know, I think... Um, I'm not too bothered once in the air, but I do like airports that look right, as well as the aircraft. I agree there with all of your accounts as well, actually. Uh, as a GA, VFR flyer, mainly series important. Uh, absolutely, if you are VFR, uh, then definitely the scenery is very important. Otherwise, it's actually impossible to fly VFR if you don't have accurate scenery. Flight model, I've never particularly cared for scenery. I know you don't, Rand, yeah. You know, I am, I have to be, if I'm completely honest with you guys, I'm kind of between the two. So with, you know, with leaning more towards flight model, but I think they're equally important because if you are a fan of VFR flying and you can't, if the scenery isn't that good, it becomes very difficult to fly VFR. Uh, for me, airplane overall is the most important uh, since I fly in real life, but I think it's more important to have great visuals to convince your brain it helps with immersion. I that's that's a very valid point to uh, Black Shark, yeah. That's a very valid point. Flight model for me, I am fortunate to play in garage band uh, for uh, commercial pilots who advise me on what's realistic or not. Ooh, you are quite lucky, yeah. Not a no-go, but would prefer it. Uh, I see. I suppose it depends on what you're trying to achieve with flight sim, VFR, IFR training, or just a hobby. That's, of course, uh, always a consideration, uh, Rashal. But, you know, it's it's very... In you know what makes this community so cool? Is the varied opinions. Um, uh, I mean, each one of you guys have a certain preference. Uh, but we're all under one... Uh, you know, sort of one umbrella, the umbrella of flight simulation. So I think we have a lot in common while we have some small differences there in what we prefer. And that makes it, uh, by the way, very good for the devs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the surrounding area. East Sky Labs Junkers A50 Junior really shines with good scenery. Yep, absolutely. Time models as well in x -Plane. Take default scenery x 12 at uh, Newcastle, where I learned to fly, is totally lacking. Yes, it is. It is, it is. Uh, I, I get you, uh, Allison. Yeah. I've got you. Don't need fancy scenery. Uh, not really, Rand. No, not, not that fancy. But, you know, uh, uh, this morning I uploaded a short of uh, uh, the first flight of the test flight I've done for the Tolus A340. And what I've done is I actually recorded the landing in a replay mode with my mobile phone from directly from the monitor. And my goodness, it looks so real. I mean, as the plane comes right before touchdown, as it comes towards the runway, just watch that chart, guys. It really looks very, very good, very realistic looking. Okay, it doesn't look like Bangkok International, 
uh, from, from that specific angle. But the airport is very good, actually. But the actual scene looks very, very convincing. So just take a look at it. Let me know what you guys think. I meant because I follow you. Scenery, uh, not as important. <laughs> I got you there, Brand. By the way, Rand, are you coming to uh, FS Expo 24? All right, so guys, I'm gonna tell you one thing. I am able to uh, invite additional delegates to FS Expo 2024 for free, which means that your admission uh, of $80 will be waived uh, and you will have the Q8 pilot badge with you. Uh, so maybe I'm going to do a giveaway of that. See if I can bring one of you guys. But I'll, I'll need to know that you're actually attending. We'll think about it. All right, we're coming up here to 17,000. I believe the transition altitude is uh, somewhere around 18. Let's take a quick look here. Uh, let's go to the arrival of the Dawn 3 Charlie, star, that's the one, let's click here, and it should be mentioned here, transition, level, uh, okay, so, 1, 3, uh, okay, 13,000, alright, not quite there yet, but we're almost at our destination now. Uh, not sure I will send you a uh, DM via Discord. No worries there. Just look at this scene. Wow. Those engines are really looking good. I got my private pilot certificate in 2004. Weather was the most important part to learn. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys for the 100 likes. I appreciate that. A very nice looking scene. Great. Man, those wings are just gorgeous. I really like uh, Tolos aircraft. I like the lineup. And I like the company. I like the developers. They're so cordial, so supportive, so nice. Very well educated. I highly recommend Atollus Aircraft. Their support is just phenomenal. New driver installed and ready to go. Uh, how is it to uh, the Flying Scotsman? Does it uh, do what the other drivers did? Bring the performance down and introduce stutters? Or is it, uh, is it good? Because if it's not, then I'll skip. They were very generous with all those giveaways too. Yeah, they were. Definitely. All right. We can see that we are getting very close now to our destination. So here you can see there are uh, a number of restrictions before we make the turn towards final for runway 19 or left. Uh, we've been flying for one hour and one minute uh, thus far. So we are a little bit late, uh, but not too bad. It's not too bad. We're looking good. Uh, do you think they will release uh, their products for MSFS? I very much doubt that, Ken. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Not done a flight yet. I will do one after your stream. Ah, okay, gotcha. All right. Getting closer here, that's the 10 uh, nautical mile radius that we've created. And everything is looking pretty good.
right, we can see the speed is dropping now. A few restrictions there uh, above 10,000 here at Salsa. Let's uh, extend the speed brakes here and help reduce the speed a bit faster. There we go. How long of a flight do you usually do when flying large airplane? I find it really I love long haul planes. I normally do short plane, uh, short hops. Um, because uh, just I don't have the time to be on stream for a very long time, uh, unfortunately. But here's the thing: uh, when the triple seven version two by Flight Factor or PMDG uh, releases, I'm going to do a full flight, and we're going to be doing the ETOPS programming as well for our flight. So I will more than likely do a flight from. Uh, like Kuwait to London Heathrow, a seven-hour flight. Uh, I'll pick a weekend to do this, of course. Um, all right, so 13,000. Let's get the uh, uh, altimeter. It's 1006. Right, 1006. And 1006 here, and... 1006 perfect all right so yeah so as soon as either one of those triple sevens release i will be doing a long haul flight uh with you guys uh currently on batsim not seen europe this busy in years that's cool uh Dougal. uh liam says it will be cool if you can fly a flight from frankfurt to la in the tolos a340 Oof, that's going to be a really long flight. Uh, I'll, I'll consider making long haul flights. Uh, those will probably need uh, some planning ahead of time uh, because I just simply cannot do it unless it's a weekend and I have to dedicate a lot of time to do that. And uh, it means I'm going to have to be away from the family as well. So considering everything, those short haul flights, uh, about one hour, maximum one, one and a half hours works very well for my schedule. Muppet 83, good thing about Tolis Airbuses is that they have waypoint hopping. Yes, they do. And they have a, uh, uh, a, a like a state restore. So if you, for if the sim crashes for any reason, you can always restore from that exact point. All right, we're approaching 10,000 feet. Landing lights are on. Runway turn off lights. Nose lights to taxi uh, to take off. Uh, wing lights are on. Let's turn on the fasten seat belt signs, and let's uh, have cabin crew prepare the cabin for arrival. We are at 10,000 feet, and we're almost there now. And if we look here, this is Bangkok International Airport by Thai models. Uh, we can see <coughs> the airport is actually a very, very beautiful rendition of the actual airport in real life. Very well done by Thai models. We'll take a look uh, once we are there. Just look how beautiful this scene is with this aircraft. God, it's so long, isn't it? Just look at that. From the back, by the way, when you look at it here, the curvature kind of looks like the A380. The curvature of the wings there. Lovely aircraft. Those cirrus clouds look really good with uh, active sky. Here's another cinematic for you guys.
just lovely. Alright, let's take a look here. 8,000. Uh, speed is going down. We can see the localizer glide slope needles moving here. We're in very close proximity now to the airport. We're going to take our time, though. We'll let the aircraft fly the entire route. Maybe we can fly direct to, uh, let's see here, to Linz. Uh, actually, we'll just fly the whole it's okay, we'll allow the aircraft to descend. Right, we're looking good. Thrust set simulations, how are you? Would be nice if we could simulate a crew change and let AI take over while we actually sleep. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, um, I think AI is is uh, is, is going to be a big thing in uh, in flight sim. Uh, already, we have seen uh, AI uh, in uh, say intentions uh, beyond ATC, uh, and I think that uh, AI is really going to transform the flight simulation hobby uh, with uh, with the use of really this advanced technology. Uh, I really, I've, I've been using Say Intentions for a while now, and I can really vouch for it. It really works very well. The only thing that they need to work on, really, is the approach, as the approaches, in general, generally speaking. But with that, I think it's pretty cool. Guys, let me ask you one more question. I know I've asked you a lot of questions today. Um, normally, when we stream, do you like me to switch the views inside, outside, and which one do you prefer more? The cockpit or uh, the external view, or maybe a wing view? Which one would you prefer? Say Intentions is good. I broke it at the weekend and worked with Brian, and we found a big bug. Oh, cool. Jay, Say Intentions can't fly without it anymore. That's, that's very good to hear. Yeah, Brian is a, is a very nice guy, and uh, we are actually planning something for the 100k subs celebration on the channel with Say Intentions. Yes, I just like what you pick. <laughs> Fly by is also nice. I like doing all views, cockpit view. Okay. All right, 5,000, we're looking good. Again, look at this old default scenery, which isn't bad. Okay, it's not Thailand, but it isn't bad. All right. A few restrictions on the way. We can see the 10 nautical mile ring here. So we're almost there now, folks. Mix of views is great. Perfect. Cockpit view. Hello, Jonathan. All three above. Cool. All right. I got it, guys. So you like the variety. That's pretty cool. All right. We're almost there now. Here's the turn to final for runway 19er left here at Bangkok International. It's been a pleasant flight overall. We can see we can now engage the approach. All right. And uh, we are, well, I think we still have time to decelerate uh, we can see the glide slope needle there. We're looking good. Localizer is captured. Glide slope is not active yet. All right, we're looking good. Let's go ahead and set flaps one. Speed check, flaps one. All 
right, looking good. Here's a restriction. Looks gorgeous. All right, we can see the airport. Uh, a few clouds at 1,500 feet, as uh, we uh, have read in uh, Navigraph uh, weather, the MHR information. At the 10 nautical mile ring here, as soon as we are, uh, we can activate the approach if it's not already active. We're looking good. The weather conditions are nice. Visibility is good. And uh, we're clear to land. Nice weather in real life. It's scorching hot, I'm told. Yeah, uh, Thailand is very hot. Thank you, Flying Scotsman. Appreciate it, my friend. Looking good. Right, let's switch to the 10 nautical mile view here as we arrive into our destination. All right, seat, belt, seat belts are on, the landing lights are on, all our lights are on here. Uh, we are going to select brakes two, We'll arm the speed brake, and we are now ready. Right, here we go, approach phase activated. Excellent, we're looking good. Let's go ahead and go to flaps two. Flaps two selected, and we're select gear down. Disconnect the autopilot. Three hundred. 
minimum. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bangkok International Airport. Reverse screen. And manual braking. How about that? That was pretty cool, wasn't it? All right, let's take a look at the uh, replay real quick. Hopefully the sim doesn't crash. Yeah, we know that. All right, here we go. Minimum. 100 above. All right, here we go. Look at this scenery, guys. Whoa, wow. Beautiful. Right on the center line. Well, let's do it again. Look at that wing flex, guys. Just lovely. Really enjoyed that. All right, here we go. Let's uh, retract the flaps. And disarm the speed brake. There we go. can go to taxi lights, landing lights off, strobe lights to auto, runway turn of lights are off, wing lights are off. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and start the APU, APU master. Very, very cool. Uh, I love landing in the A340, it's just uh, so much fun to fly this aircraft and hand flying it is a real joy guys. If you are serious about Airbus and experiencing fly-by-wire like it is in the real world, I highly recommend that you invest in the Tolus A340. Right, let's stop the clock here. One hour, 20 minutes. Very nice uh, scenery there of uh, Thai Models uh, Bangkok International for X-Plane 12. Right, AP is start. There we go. There's the marshal are there. All 
All right. Parking brake set. APU bleed on. And we can now turn off the engines. Yeah. All right, engines are powering off now. <laughs> and now rush to immigration. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the scenery is very good. We'll take a look at the scenery in just a second here. Uh, okay, so we have here, this is off. Uh, let's see, nose light off. Uh, nav lights off. Beacon lights off. Strobe lights off. And we are on the RK, so I think we can turn off the seatbelt sign. There we go. And if we come out here, you can see that the jetway is automatically connecting to the aircraft. Very nice. Uh, always tie models the integration with, uh, with the SAM, which is the uh, Scenery Animation Manager, is very well done. So here we can see both are now extending and we can come now to Sam main window and in route arrival. Uh, so we have already arrived. So we're going to go to the parking. We're going to select the jetway and that's it. It's connecting right now. And once it connects, then that will turn green as well. There we go, both are green, and we are ready to open the doors and uh, let our passengers disembark the aircraft. We can see, again, the ground equipment heading to the aircraft to unload. There we go. And there you have it. It was a pretty cool flight. I really enjoyed that, guys. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> My light counter is stuck. <laughs> All right, we can see now the baggage cart there. They're coming. And, uh, yeah. Here you can see that the uh, airplane is now being serviced. I, I will, you know, Sam, and it's too bad that the Sam uh, uh, plugin is hasn't been updated in a very long time. But uh, it has potentials. I mean, even if you look at the animation there with the guy unloading the baggage it's actually pretty good yeah okay let's take a quick look here at the airport uh if you look here at this terminal here i mean this is a very well done by Thai models look at that very very detailed scenery very nicely done and highly optimized for performance so again you've got the interior of the terminal uh, you know, very reasonable, but mainly the uh, the entire look of the terminal is looking very good. All the roads, the control tower, all the buildings, uh, all the parking uh, spots there uh, are done very, very well. Very, very nice scenery. And I'm sure you want to, of course, see this at night. I mean, this look at this. This is a very nice scenery right there. Yeah. I wish he had included a little more orthos around the airport. But not a big deal. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at things during nighttime. There we go. Here we go. And here are all the lights. Look at this spectacular uh, approach it would have been if it was nighttime, uh, as we have, uh, as we've arrived into into Thailand. But yeah, you can see it here. It's it's very nice. Uh, it's a scenery again. I recommend. You really can't go wrong with uh, Thai models. Very very nice scenery and uh, optimized for uh, for performance and there we are here looks like still all the baggage is being unloaded which brings us ladies and gents to the end of our live stream today i will be streaming again on saturday i'm still not sure what i have uh, in store for you but it might we might be flying to korea uh, or in korea in south korea that is and uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this stream as much as I enjoyed streaming it for you. Until we meet again, please take care of yourselves and each other. And I will see you all very soon. Thanks for tuning in and good night.